The Katzenberg Tunnel is part of the expansion and development of the Karlsruhe Baal route. Going through a tunnel solves the problem of noise pollution, of course. And altogether we save around 10 minutes of travel time here with the Katzenberg Tunnel alone. Expansion and new development track Karlsruhe Baal. The existing Rhine Valley Railway has reached the limits of its capacity and now has to be extended to four tracks. Between Bad Bellingen and Efringenkirchen is the 9.4 km long Katzenberg Tunnel, which straightens out the line of the old Rhine Valley Railway. It leads through the outer region of the Markgräfler Land in the area known as Easteiner Klotz. In future, trains with speeds of up to 250 km per hour will be sent through the third longest rail tunnel in Germany. Installation of a high-speed overhead contact line has made this possible. Planners and engineers are realizing a new installation method for the single-track tunnel tubes, consisting of segmented liners made from concrete, so-called tunnel rings. What's innovative here in the Katzenberg Tunnel is that we were able to do without any anchor rails, that is, support rails for fixing the overhead contact line. Instead, at precisely determined drilling locations, anchors are being attached to the tunnel segments. Every centimetre counts here. The tunnel segment is two metres wide and three drilling channels have been worked into it, up to a width of eight centimetres. In these eight centimetres, the anchors are measured, and that's where the drilling has to take place. The cantilevers for stabilizing the overhead contact line are exactly 48 meters apart. The task of the overhead contact line engineers is to completely shift these fixed distances across a length of 9 kilometers until they and the drilling channels marking the location of the drill holes form a perfect fit. The drilling teams work on mobile work platforms specially designed for the Katzenberg Tunnel. The construction site traffic can travel beneath the platform, enabling parallel work to take place. Now it's time for the drilling to begin. The compressor is running. The heavy drilling templates are fixed precisely into position using a vacuum. All drilling dust is immediately removed by suction. Dust not only settles on the tunnel walls, potentially blocking sensitive appliances, it also gets stuck. It only gets loosened at higher speeds, the first train journeys in fact, and then it seriously hampers visibility during the first runs through the tunnel. Depending on which component of the overhead contact line needs to be fixed to the tunnel segment, the fitters attach a certain number of anchors that create a so-called drilling image. For each drilling image there is a template, nine in all. Clean drill holes also play a crucial role in the service life of a connection. The men install around 7,000 mechanical anchors. All the components need to be drilled in this way, and for the components exposed to very high cutting forces, we use a composite 20 anchor to absorb the energy. The cartridges on the composite anchors contain two chemicals, which react with each other the moment the container is destroyed. The threaded anchor is glued into the concrete within a very short time. This connection is so stable that a passenger car could be hung from it. Principally, traction current flows from the substation and along the overhead contact line to the power consumers on the vehicle, then back along the rails to the substation again. Inside the tunnel, all components, such as suspension pillars and cantilevers, have to be earthed. This is why they are connected with the return conductor that the men are installing in the tunnel roof. These components of the overhead contact line make up what is known as the line feeder, 
which gives the nine kilometer long stretch of rail its power. The contact wire which supplies the train with power is also fed with electricity via this line feeder. The suspension pillars for the line feeder are mounted inside the drilling channels on the tunnel wall. The new mounting concept has proven its worth. We've successfully saved over 1.5 million euros with this solution and the innovation is already being successfully implemented in other tunnel projects too. Almost every component has been developed or modified for use in the Katzenberg Tunnel to meet the standards of high-speed operation. This also applies to the cantilevers, which are designed for speeds up to 330 km per hour, hence their name, Re 330. What looks simple and inaccurate at first glance will become a high-precision overhead contact line by the end of the day. Because whether the train will be evenly supplied with power depends on the location of the contact wire. The specialists from Balfour BT Rail work with the highest concentration as they draw in first the catenary wire and then the contact wire. Every move has to be just right. After all, the catenary wire and the contact wire weigh 1500 kilos per kilometer. But being suspended from the catenary wire alone is not enough to hold the contact wire precisely in position because during operation it changes its position through pantograph contact and temperature fluctuations. This is why the contact wire is kept tensioned at 27 kilonewton using the wheel tensioner. The overhead contact line is now in position and ready for the first tests. In operation, trains can pass through the tunnel in 2 minutes and 15 seconds when travelling the 9.4 km distance at 250 km per hour. There are reserves too. All the overhead contact line systems have been tested and approved for a maximum of 330 km per hour. This has the following benefits. Firstly, the Ray 330 allows us to travel at every speed up to that maximum in future. And secondly, it has a longer service life.